All right, guys, how's it going out there? Mmm, God, I love this. I love this coffee. I may not sleep for a week, but it's worth it. So, you're wondering what we're doing today. So, I like doing a refresh, especially when I, I, got, I develop new bullets. I want to give them a shot, see how they're shooting in air rifles we've already previously done videos on. So, what I pulled out was uh, the 357 Challenger Big Bore, or I think some people call it the Big Nine, but this is the heavy duty 357 Challenger, not the regulated Challenger, which I refer to as the Coyote Gun, or I think it's the 357 Challenger Pro. Yeah, buddy, Challenger Pro, a.k.a. the Coyote Rifle. Uh, but it's got the regulator, so you can't put more than a, you know, like a 99 grain bullet in the magazine. You can clearly see the magazine size difference here. This one here, you can put up to 155 grains in the magazine. It's, it's wider, much wider. So, I always refer to this as the 357 deer gun, and the other one is the 357 coyote gun. So, you have an idea on power level. Too many people seem to think just because they got the Challenger Pro, you can go out and deer hunt with it. And there's just no way it has enough foot pounds of energy to deer hunt. It's a coyote gun. Remember that. You got to know you new guys don't understand foot pounds of energy yet. But you will. You're getting there. So it's my job to teach you young bucks so you know what to do when you're out there. So we pull this out the closet and we've got a brand new 119 grain, which is, to be honest, way too lightweight for this, this beast, okay? It's almost like dry firing. It's such a powerhouse. Uh, then the 150, the new 173, and the old 207, okay, which we've had for a while. And the reason I decided to put this together is if you look at the chart, once I put it up here in the video, the back pressure of the bullet is creating, it's different. You can't, if the sweet spot on the 119 is 3,000 feet, PSI in the air tank, it's not going to be the same sweet spot for the 173. That's why I put the chart in 4,500 PSI fill ending after 10 shots. And you see there's, there's a big difference in air consumption in the shots and where the, the, you've got the bell curve where you're getting valve lock in the beginning it's peaking in the middle as fast as it's going to go and then starts to drop again. So if you look at the chart, you'll have an, a better understanding how unregulated rifle works with the different weight of the bullets. Uh, all are very accurate. It's just, you know, a lighter bullet doesn't have much back pressure, so it starts to move almost immediately, which means the valve is going to close a little quicker. That's how that equals out. So well, let's do a little bit of shooting. We'll put the chart in, and this way you've got a better grasp or understanding of bullet weight versus PSI fill. At least I hope you do. All right, so let's do some shooting now.
All right, so this is what we're playing with with the 357 Big Nine or Big Boar 357 Challenger. So we got the new 119, the 150, the newer 173, and the old fashioned 207. All these have the same, what you'd see, kind of boat tail designs. Uh, they are the uh, more tapered nose uh, for the longer distance. They still pack quite a deadly punch. You've seen the chart, and now granted, it's unregulated, guys. So this thing's screaming. But unregulated means you're not going to be stacking one on top of the other, okay? Because uh, each time you shoot it, it's a little bit slower, so just keep that in mind. So with the 119, our best was 309 foot-pounds with that little 119. 323 with the 150 grain, 340 with the 173, and with the 207 355 and I believe if you look at the previous videos uh, that I was easily with the heavier what I call deer slugs uh, easily in the you know 300 to 350 foot pound range so you're pushing some heavy bullets in the you know 850 950 feet per second which is really screaming for just out of the box rifle So with this, we've got just the rifle itself from Terry Fox, Fox Air Power. One barrel band uh, from David, a Black Arts design. Uh, I've got a Neil Clegg muffler on here. And just a regular scope and uh, some pick rail adapters uh, so we can play with it here. Um, you know, fill probe usual here. Uh, like I said, I was doing 4,500 PSI, and then just to see where it's at, and you can see again, I'll reiterate, each weight bullet seems to have a different sweet spot, you know, with the, with the bell curve, with the power curve. Um, all of them started out slow at 4,500, peaked at the sweet spot, and then came back down. So that's Big Bore Air Guns 101. So that is it, gentlemen. I just wanted to give you some figures, show you what different weights did, like I said, once we design a new type of bullet, and then we'll get outside and do some accuracy testing. But I already know these are dead on. We've already practiced with these with a slew of air rifles. Um, as a matter of fact, the 119, the 150, and the 173, I more or less designed those for the uh, Western Rattler. So, you know, if they're, they're dead accurate in this, We've already tested some in the Rattler, and they're dead accurate there. So, you know, no dead reckoning here. We're dead accurate. So, again, thank you, guys. If you have any questions about hollow points, contact me, Mr. Hollow Point, Robert Vogel. Anything about the air rifle, Terry Fox at Fox Air Power. And barrel band is a must for all AEA products. you got to have a barrel band. You know, suppressors, like I said, this is from Neil. Uh, you've also got Donnie FL out there uh, if you guys need to, you know, quiet it down. I don't usually use these outside because I'm outside, but inside this keeps the cat from bouncing off the wall and, you know, pissing all over the furniture and the bed. So with that being said, thank you, gentlemen, and we'll come at you with some, uh, hopefully something more fun and exciting in the near future. Mr. Hollow Point out.